Hi, everybody. Welcome to Why Eagles Why, our weekly look at the Philadelphia Eagles. I'm Dave Bontempo, along with Bill Gelman and Pete Amato. You know how we do this, four quarters and overtime. Please hit like and subscribe to be notified about future videos. As we start the first quarter, well, the Eagles are 5-0, and but people are saying, why Eagles, why? Why didn't you cover last week against the Arizona Cardinals? The Eagles just prevailed by three points, a sign of the times as to how good they are. Bill and Pete, what does 5-0 and mean to you? Well, Dave, 5-0 uh, and is exciting, especially being that they're still the only undefeated team in the NFL. But quite frankly... I want to hear 4-0, 5-0 during the postseason. Right now, this is just setting the stage for what we really want. And, you know, there, there's a very good chance that this number is going to continue to grow. And a lot of people that bet the over on the uh, Eagles wins, regular season win total, probably aren't going to have to sweat it out in December or January. But, you know, let's see what really happens because, quite frankly, you know, you can have a great regular season, but if you don't win it all, you know, what's the point? If you take baseball as an example, look at the New York Mets. That's right. The Mets uh, had a great regular season, and out they go. Pete, what does 5-0 and mean to you? For me, I think it means, um, as, actually, as, as a fan, it means bragging rights um, because the division's so close right now. So, I mean, right now, it's, it's yes, we're, we're number one in the division, but we're only one game – uh, ahead and it's a long season so right now it's, it's more bragging rights for the fans and this week is the biggest bragging rights game so far it's Dallas week so and there's a lot of cowboy cockroaches that kind of skither their way around the uh, Philadelphia area so um, this is a big game for us um, and I think it, it, it gives the Eagles a winning attitude I think it means that's a big uh, feeling for them and um it, it feels good to be on top. So, I mean, I think it just brings an overall uh, positive feel to the fan base and to the team. You might have gathered that Bill and Peter are on location. They are at the Hard Rock in Atlantic City where there's a lot of excitement, primarily because it is Eagles Dallas week. And we're going to take a look at that in the second quarter. <laughs> second quarter of Why Eagles Why. The Eagles and Dallas Cowboys meet Sunday night at the link. They have been featured more often than any two teams on Sunday night football. They are big for the NFL, and people in the Philadelphia and Dallas area love this rivalry. What are some of your favorite moments? One of mine in 1987. It was the strike season. The Cowboys players had crossed over the picket lines and beaten the Eagles' replacement players early in the year. Later, Buddy Ryan got some revenge. With all the players back, the Eagles were up 10. He had Randall Cunningham kneel to fake a kneel down. He threw a bomb in the end zone, pass interference, an add-on touchdown, a TD for spite. That is the Eagles and Cowboys. How about you, Bill and Pete? What are your favorite Eagles Cowboys rivalry moments? Mine is mine sticks out pretty pretty well. I was actually at the game it was 2005. Um, it was the first season that when To went with the Cowboys. Um, the Eagles were up. I think it was the fourth quarter. The Eagles were up uh, less than a touchdown, but Dallas was driving. They were like probably on the 10 yard line, and then boom, Lido pick six. And uh, basically puts the game away. And then you see on the sidelines, T.O. yelling at his new Dallas Cowboy team. Um, the, the crowd was insane that game. I was there. I will never forget that uh, moment. Uh, it was probably one of the, my favorite moments in person. It was definitely my favorite moment in person um, at the Eagles game. And that song has stuck in your head you know, ever since. <laughs> How about you, Bill? I know that one of your memories comes from the stadium as well. Yes, it's hard to believe our, our best Eagles memories 
are, are from Veteran Stadium, which I thought was a horrible stadium, but it has a lot of nostalgia and history. I was at the uh, October 1999 game, Eagles Cowboys, which little did we know at the time would be Michael Irving's uh, final game as a player. He suffered an injury during that game, and the Eagles were stinking up the joint. We decided to leave the game early because it just the offense was flat, and we lo and behold we get in the car and the Eagles score and they score again and they, they win the game so we beat the traffic but we missed all the, all the offensive excitement that didn't show up till the uh, end of the game but of course you had to tell people look what I did for them in leaving since that time I know you've had some supermarket trips based on how well they'll do if you get back too early or get back too late so that's uh that's one we still remember for you. Yeah. So, and the and the Phillies are up to nothing as we're uh, yeah. recording here. You guys probably hear this. The games in the background. We're at Hard Rock Sportsbook, um, so it's hard to get away from all the excitement. We did move location. Obviously, uh, we we really didn't time very well because the Phillies game's on and Philly fans are everywhere, everywhere. And you might be able to hear it, but the Phillies just took a two nothing lead on the uh, untouchable Atlanta Braves. So, if you hear in the background, just that. Uh, uh, Bill, I, I I know that now you guys have to figure this in. Now, if you move and they score, then you have to stay there. If you have to move again, you do it. That's part of the whole thing. Uh, that's the second quarter of Why Eagles Why. When we come back, we'll talk to Butch Bachanico, who is the head of the sportsbook operations at the Hard Rock. <laughs> Third quarter of Why Eagles Why. Dave Bontempo. Pete Amato and Bill Gelman with you. Pete and Bill are chasing the excitement of what's going on with this Eagles team, as well as what's happening with the Phillies as the game began when they were on location. For the third quarter, Bill sits down with Butch Buchanico, who is the director of sportsbooks operations at the Hard Rock, to talk about the Eagles and about football. Bill Gelman here for Why Eagles Why. I'm down with Butch Botanico, Sportsbook Director at Hard Rock Hotel Casino Atlantic City. How you doing, Butch? How you doing? Good. Great day here in Philadelphia. Yes, it is. Phillies uh, kicking off the uh, divisional series. And uh, uh, Eagles Dallas week, of course, and that's why I'm here with you. Yeah, yeah. We picked uh, the best week on the schedule to come down and do this. Um, so speaking of the Eagles, um, what are you seeing in the futures market from the beginning of the season until now? Now, you know, you're know, talking about the only undefeated team in the NFL. Well, a significant difference. Uh, most of your Eagles fans, they really don't pay attention too much to opening odds as opposed to how the odds change. But from a value standpoint, if you would have took the Eagles preseason, you could have got them at 30 to 1 to win the Super Bowl. Um, right now, they're down to 8 to 1. And they're actually the favorite to win both the NFC Conference and their division, which is not was not the case when the season started. So that would indicate that not only is their successes being uh, reflected in the odds, but money's starting to come in. Yes. And in the uh, Super Bowl picture, they have uh, Green Bay, Kansas City, uh, right up there with them? Or? Yeah, it's Kansas City's up there with them. Uh, based on the play of Cincinnati and the Rams lately, the Super Bowl hangover, as everybody likes to say, they kind of fell back to the pack a little bit. But the Eagles are right up there. Um, there's the Tampa Bay still up there, and your Green Bay still up there. But uh, the landscape's going to probably significantly change uh, if the Eagles keep up their success and some other teams rise to the top and some other teams struggle a little bit. Now with the bye weeks coming into play uh, starting this week and injuries, this is about the time of year that injuries start to come into play. So we'll see what happens, but we're optimistic uh, for the Eagles. It's always good for us here at the sports book when Philadelphia teams do good, New York teams do good. Uh, and right now we got both of that going on with the Jets, Giants, and the Eagles, but um, Eagles obviously are our bread and butter here at the sports book in the bar right and in talking about the Eagles, we've got to talk about Jalen Hurts um, and potential MVP conversation. What are you seeing in the way of uh, Jalen Hurts and the MVP bet? And you know, who are some of the other guys that are in the mix with him right now? Right now, Jalen Hurts has moved all the way up to second as far as uh, money wagered on him and liability. 
he's only behind uh, Josh Allen for the Bills. Other than that, it's uh, right now a two-horse race between him and Josh Allen. Okay. And, you, and you're getting a lot of action on, on uh, Hurts? Or? A few. We don't really get too much when it comes to, uh, you know, awards, offensive player of the year. The NFL is kind of strange because they break it up into offensive player of the year, defensive player of the year. Uh, but uh, people start to filter in. After about midway through the season, we'll actually take them odds down because it'll get – It'll get filtered out so much and wind up being down to four or five guys. As, uh, just like the teams, as the players' performance rise and the other players either get injured or don't play as much, whatever the situation might be. And, of course, it's Eagles-Cowboys week. I believe the line I heard this morning on the way down is about five and a half. When you get Which is, I guess, is the book's way of saying uh, the Cowboys aren't as good as advertised. Uh, but it's, uh, you know, what do you see in the line in terms of where the Eagles Cowboys line is here on Tuesday when we're recording and where do you see the line potentially going? Well, it's, that's coming. it's a good question. It's kind of been fluctuating between five and five and a half. Uh, it went up to five and a, it went up to five and a half, which indicated some early money and some early bets were on the Eagles laying the five. So people were willing to lay the five points, which moved the line up to five and a half. But I think by kickoff, it'll probably be a straight five. I mean, they like to say with the way the Eagles are playing and the fact that they're home and the fact that it's prime time, you know, you get the three and then you add the two on top of that for them being undefeated. Dallas having a back of quarterback because I think you're going to see a little gamesmanship when it comes to Dallas as far as the quarterback situation. I mean, as we know, um, our good friend for Eagles fans, Jerry Jones, likes to get involved in these type of things. So I think you'll see a little gamesmanship, but to give Dallas a little credit, um, their defense is playing good. So it's just going to be a big test for, for Jalen Hurts and the Eagles offense. I think the Eagles defense will be just fine. Um, I think it'll benefit us to get Cooper Rush now to be as a month table. I'm confident the coaching staff will make the proper adjustments and be ready to go. And Eagles are five and zero. You mentioned how how you've gotten a much better deal on Eagles at the beginning of the season. But in terms of the actual betting, actual Eagles, as each week we've seen uh, them go from one of uh, several undefeated teams to the only undefeated team left. How is the Eagles action picking up since uh, they're now five and up? Well, early, earlier in the season, I would say the first first three or four weeks of the season, people have been a little tentative, I guess afraid of uh, being disappointed, Eagles fans that, that like to, to bet. Um, they were a little tentative on really jumping in on the Eagles. We've seen some situations where we didn't get a lot of bets on the Eagles. Now, this past week was a... Um, Look ahead week for the Eagles, obviously. Right. They have to go to go out to Arizona and then they have to come back and prepare for a big game where their peers and the whole nation's gonna be watching to see if they're for real. So from a betting standpoint, I mean they didn't cover last week. But I think a lot of people stayed away last week that would normally bet the Eagles knowing that that was the situation. So, I mean, you got your diehard people that will bet the Eagles no matter what, right? But um, action has definitely been moving up in favor of people betting the Eagles as opposed to sitting back like they did the first two weeks of the season. Okay. And, you know, anything else in terms of Eagles betting or the TVs in front of us? we got some Phillies action uh, about to start in a little less than an hour. So, uh, anything you want to lay on one? The Eagles or the Phillies? Yeah, well, um, for the Eagles, it's going to be it's going to be real interesting to see where they go from here. I mean, uh, I think it's unrealistic to think the Eagles are going to go 17 and 0. But we've had a lot of people speaking of Eagles action. We did have people in the beginning of the year um, bet up their win total, so I think it opened up at maybe.
maybe eight, eight and a half uh, before the season started. It got up as high as nine and a half. Um, obviously, with the season started, the win totals are off the board now here at Hard Rock, but uh, we did have a lot of action on people having confidence in the Eagles to, to go over the win total. And I think right now, if you have a wager in on that, I think you're looking pretty good because you're halfway there and we haven't even gotten to Halloween yet. As far as the Phillies, I mean, we're starting, as a matter of fact, right before we started the taping of the show, I mean, playoffs in baseball, especially the Phillies are involved, really bring out the fans. I mean, we get the average, just the average Joe, uh, male and female, coming to the window, throwing that 5 or $10 down that we may not normally see either during a baseball or a football season. And we're starting to see that with the Eagles now, too. We're seeing more of your, your normal person. Uh, when I say normal person, not your regular gambler, coming up and throwing 5 or $10 won the game and you know there's no better place to come watch the games in Philly you're looking at our brand new gigantic screen right in front of us um, you know we show all the Eagles games we show all the NFL games uh, we got a nice clean atmosphere here a nice friendly atmosphere my team does a good job getting to know the betters here uh, we know our customers and we satisfy them by showing them what they want to see and offering at the betting window uh, what they want to bet on Thank you very much, Butch. You're welcome. My pleasure. I'll yeah. see you the next time we play yeah. Dallas. All right. We wish best of luck to Butch and to the Hard Rock, which will be jumping on Sunday night when the Eagles play the Cowboys. Fourth quarter of Why Eagles Why. Well, how about the game? Well, we have a lot to talk about regarding the defenses. Dallas has shown up. Just 62 points allowed this year. They're being compared with their doomsday defense from 1973. They have stood up tall, and their defense not only scored the first touchdown last week against the Rams, but then they blocked a punt and set up a field goal. Dallas is winning behind defense, and that's their story. I am curious to see how their pressure will match up with Jalen Hurts and his scrambling, but that's why they play the game. Pete, how about you? When you look at this game defensively, what comes to mind for you? Uh, for me, it comes down to the aggressiveness of the defense um, on both sides. On the Cowboys look like a well-styled defense. They look like a well-coached defense. Um, they, they play aggressive. They play downhill. And uh, there's not really anything crazy or like tricky about the defense. It's just they have they have some really good pass rushers. One in particular, uh, you got Parsons, who is the best pass rusher in the NFL right now. Um, so I think yeah, Jalen Hurts is going to have to uh, go through his reads quick. Um, he's going to have to go back. I mean, he's going to have to keep improving on uh, him uh, going through his reads and looking outfield and not looking to scramble. But if he has to scramble, he takes it. On the other side, with the Eagles' defense, um, that last week we saw that um, what's worried me about Jonathan Gannon since we since he became our defensive coordinator is when he gets in these um, stressful situations where he kind of goes back to his old ways of, of uh, calling it uh, a softer defense, a safe defense, a prevent. They were literally uh, you have two shut down corners, and uh, you have you have them playing. I think it was like 12, 13 yards off at one point in the fourth quarter last week. And it doesn't make sense to me. I mean, uh, he wants to stop the big play, but what's the difference between one big play or taking a chance to try to stop him and, and just um, – or, or playing prevent defense and just have them chop down all, all the way down to the field and score anyway. Um, I, I, You guys know this. I'm, I'm, I'm one of Jonathan Gannon's uh, big, biggest critics. And I gave him a little credit in the beginning of the season, but he still worries me. He just, uh, especially last week, he just went back to his, he just went back to that prevent defense. And I feel, I really hope it's not that, uh, it's the adjustments game. I really hope that's not what it is where, okay, their offense made an adjustment and, and now Gannon doesn't know what to do. So he just goes back to like, let's not let up a big play, which it just doesn't doesn't work in the NFL. It never worked. And uh, so let's hope he actually plays an aggressive style defense again. Uh, let's the players, the talented players, do what they are brought here to do and man up on the uh, Dallas wide receivers. Yeah, I'm going to jump on that and um, 
this is this is where it all matters this week. You know, this is the NFC East game where you have the Dallas Cowboys four and one, the uh, Philadelphia Eagles five and zero. But the five and zero doesn't matter if you can't get past Dallas. At the beginning of the season, we talked about how Dallas had a slight edge over the Eagles. The Eagles are now the team to beat in the NFC, and they're home, prime time. You know, let, let's get to six and zero. This is like because then you get up on the Cowboys. I get a two-game lead on the Cowboys heading into the bye week. You couldn't have asked for a better start to the season. But the Cowboys and the Eagles games, they, the Cowboys have had the Eagles numbers in recent seasons. This is the time to get over the hump. Will the Eagles get over the hump and get to 6-0? Six, six and oh? We'll find out on Sunday night. And the Eagles coming in favored at plus 4.5, so that's the expectation that Cooper Rush is still going to play for the Cowboys. Dak Prescott wants back in, naturally, because his backup is doing very well. But they're probably going to hold them off. Just keep a, an eye on that line. If it moves a lot, you know that Dak is back. But as of uh, the time that we're doing this, it looks like Dak is going to sit one more out. We'll come back with an overtime segment on why, Eagles why. Overtime segment of Why Eagles Why. Hey, we take a little shot at the score and look at the matchups. I think Jalen Hurts makes a couple more plays than the Dallas defense. I think the Eagles defense rushes up and adjusts, puts the pressure on Cooper Rush. The defenses have been stout. I see a little lower scoring game here. Eagles 23, Cowboys 16. How about you guys? Um, I think um, it's going to come down to um, our, you know, I feel like our offense has more firepower than the Cowboys offense. Um, I think that's what's kind of going to put the Eagles over the hump. Actually, what's going to put the Eagles over the hump is it's, it's at home. And uh, if it was not away, I, I would probably take the Cowboys this week. Um, so I think um, home field advantage and um, – and we have to establish the run game. That's the biggest thing for me. Like, it's we had successful run. We've had a successful run this season when we um, established it. But we got to keep stay with it. Uh, keep the doubt the Cowboys offense off the field. Use your um, use your running backs. Use your tight end. Spread the ball around. And um, yeah, low scoring. I agree. Um, I think maybe. Uh, 16 13 Eagles. Whoa. All right. Low scoring. It's an NFC East game. And it's a, they're always ugly and weird. And just throw out a weird number there. And I'm going to agree with Pete. The, the running game is one of the keys to this, this uh, game because the, the, the running game up until the end against Arizona just had, had issues. You need to establish the run, uh, mix in the pass, you know, have a balanced offense, don't get off to a late start. And on the defensive side of the ball, you have to uh, put pressure on, on Cooper Rush. You have to – and they have a defense. That you can't be laid back against Dallas because Dallas showed uh, everybody last week that they can beat the Super Bowl champions without their top quarterback. Will they rush? They need to rush the rush, rush, and uh, you know dominate early. I'm gonna go Eagles 24, Cowboys 20. All right. Okay. So both of you, uh, we all would be right around the under, and uh, mine would be a slight Eagles cover, and your guys would be a slight Dallas cover. So it's, it's funny. It's, it's part, and that's how the split betting has been across the nation uh, throughout this week uh, as we get ready for this game. So it's always a pleasure to be with my pals for Bill Gelman, for Peter Motto. This is Dave Bontempo saying, please hit like and subscribe to be notified about future videos. And we'll talk to you next week on why Eagles Why.